It's operations time on the Willow Creek Railroad. In this video, you've been assigned as the engineer of train number 25, the Merchant Special. The Merchant Special is a high priority scheduled freight made up of express boxcars and express reefers. Today's run takes you from Spokane Staging to Summit Springs, with a brief stop in Bucky's Crossing. In Summit Springs, you'll set out one boxcar carrying LCL freight, which I'll explain shortly. Once you're finished in Summit Springs, you'll head to the yard in Waverly. A high priority and therefore scheduled freight makes things interesting during an operating session, since we are primarily using the schedule to authorize our train movements. We check the schedule and find the column for train number 25. Per the schedule, we read this column from the bottom of the schedule up. In the highlighted column, we see that we're scheduled to depart Spokane at 5.02 a.m. We're scheduled to stop in Bucky's Crossing for 13 minutes, although we aren't scheduled to do any work. We depart Bucky's Crossing and are scheduled to arrive in Summit Springs at 6.08. There's a footnote on the arrival line, so we check it out at the bottom of the schedule. Footnote 4 indicates that we are to set out an express boxcar at the freight depot in Summit Springs. After completing this work, we head to Waverly with a scheduled arrival of 6.59 a.m. The dispatcher gives you your train order, which tells you basically the same thing we just talked about. Again, your only assigned work is to set out the express boxcar in Summit Springs. Since train number 25 departs Spokane staging, you go to the car card box for Spokane and find that train number 25 is sitting on track number 3. You check the car cards. An EMD SD7 diesel is assigned to your train, which includes one boxcar for Summit Springs and three express reefers and three more express boxcars, all destined for Waverly. You check the clock and see that it's almost time to depart, so you acquire your locomotive and set the staging yard route switch to track number 3. At 5.02 you pull out of staging. Since staging is a hidden yard, you watch the yellow lights on the control panel which indicate the location of your train. The yellow lights indicate that your train is still in the tunnel, coming from staging, but that you're nearing the tunnel portal. Your train finally appears, pulled by the SD7 diesel as noted on the engine card. You cross the South Forks River and come to a stop at the yard signal controlling entrance to Bucky's Crossing. You use the trackside telephone to contact the yardmaster, requesting permission to enter Bucky's Crossing. While we wait for clearance, let's take this opportunity to examine your train. The express boxcar heading to Summit Springs is right behind your locomotive. This is an LCL car, which I'll explain in just a second. Next are the three express reefers, probably carrying fresh fruits and vegetables. And then we have three express boxcars, all carrying LCL freight. LCL stands for less than car load, and an LCL car is carrying a large number of small packages and other freight. In the 1940s and 1950s, LCL freight on the railroad was equivalent to the UPS and other delivery trucks that we have today. LCL freight was big business for the railroad and it is on the Willow Creek. The reefers of fresh fruits and vegetables and the LCL boxcars are the reason the Merchant Special is a priority freight. The operator in the interlocking tower at Glacier Valley aligns the crossing for our train and the yard master at Bucky's Crossing gives you a green signal to proceed into the yard. With clearance given, you head train number 25 into Bucky's Crossing.
The Yardmaster has routed you onto the Otter Station track since you don't have any work to do in Bucky's Crossing. You'll sit here until your scheduled departure time. You decide to stay in the cab of your locomotive since there's only a few minutes until your scheduled departure. A train can always arrive earlier than its scheduled time, but it never departs early. While you wait, you watch the Yardmaster move his switch engine into position to start unloading cars from the car float that arrived earlier this morning. But the fun of watching someone else work will have to wait. It's 528 and time for train number 25 to depart Bucky's Crossing. There's lots of scenery along your route, and since you haven't made this trip for some time, I'll give you a narrated tour. Your train first rounds Nogatuck Bay and heads through the natural tunnel by the lighthouse. You cross the curved wooden trestle over the marsh, where you pass a couple of workmen preparing to fix some broken boards on the platform. You emerge from a long tunnel and begin the 2% grade up the mountains, with Willow Creek running along your right side. You pass the small passenger shelter at Highland and a cluster of houses where some of the local coal miners live. And then you cross the Highland Loop Trestle, a 215-foot curved wooden trestle standing 75 feet above a dry gorge. Next you cross a Warren Pony Trust Bridge with views of Highland Falls out the left side of your cab. As you continue your climb, you cross Laytaw Pass with a great view of Mount Rainier in the distance. You finally arrive at Lookout Pass and head your train around the Summit Springs Loop. Your train crosses the steel viaduct at George's Gorge and then makes it through the snow shed. You pull into the passing siding next to the new interchange track and stop your train. Welcome to Summit Springs. You immediately go to work and uncouple the first express box car from the rest of your train. This is the car that you will have to set out at the freight depot in Summit Springs per the car's way bill. You maneuver your road engine and the express box car through the various turnouts and head through the tunnel to Summit Springs. The freight depot at Summit Springs is a fairly new addition to the layout and it's a really busy place when it comes to LCL freight. You carefully shove the express boxcar into position beside the freight depot's loading dock. Uncouple the car and then head back to your waiting train.
you retrace your route back to the passing siding where the remainder of train number 25 is sitting. Once you recouple onto your train, you file the car card for the express box car that you left at the freight depot into the appropriate slot in the car card box. You check your watch and see that you're running just a little bit behind schedule, so you signal your departure. Next stop, Waverly. Thanks to our HO scale drone, we get some great aerial shots of your train as it heads through the mountain pass towards Upper Meadows. You pass the Richter Vinegar Company at Upper Meadows. and head across the Sarlat Stone Viaduct. At the far end of the viaduct, you stop your train at the signal for Waverly Yard. You again use the trackside telephone to notify the Yardmaster that train number 25 is ready for arrival. The Yardmaster aligns the turnout at Waverly Junction, which causes the mainline block signal to turn red, and then sets the yard permission signal to yellow, indicating that you have permission to proceed. With clearance received, train number 25 is once again moving. You weave your way into the yard. The yardmaster has lined your train into arrival track number two also known as the water tower track. You pull your train into this track far enough for your caboose to clear the far turnout. Welcome to Waverly. Your work leading train number 25 is done. You uncouple from your train and take your road engine to the engine servicing area. Once you're at the servicing area, you'll turn your diesel over to one of the hostlers, who will spin your locomotive on the turntable and then park it to take on fuel and sand. It's time for you to relax as the yard switcher prepares to work your train. 
The yard switcher first moves your caboose to the caboose track. He then returns to your train and couples on to the rear boxcar. He checks the car cards and sees that the three reefers are to be moved to the icing facility and the boxcars are to be set out at the commissary building. The icing facility is just down the track in front of the train, so the switcher pushes the three reefers to the icing platform. He then files the three car cards into the icing platform slot in the car card box. Next, the switcher moves the three express box cars to the commissary building located along the backside of the yard. With his work on train number 25 finished, the Yardmaster files the car cards for the three express box cars into the car card box. I don't usually talk about construction tips in these videos, but the industries at Waverly Yard present a bit of a challenge. In some locations, the industry tracks are not perfectly level. While this doesn't affect the yard tracks, it does affect the industrial tracks, especially if a car has free-flowing metal wheels, such as at the commissary building track. I learned a clever trick to help stop rolling freight cars, as you'll see here. The little blue line you see standing up between the rails is a nylon bristle from a cheap scrub brush. I drilled a small hole in the tie close to the rail and cemented one of the bristles into the hole so that it stands about one half inch high. This is just high enough to rub on the axle of a freight car so that it stops a car from rolling once it's uncoupled, but doesn't affect the car when it's being pushed or pulled by a switch engine. The nylon bristles come from a plastic scrub brush that I purchased for one dollar. Neat trick. I hope that you've enjoyed your time in the cab of train number 25 today. Special trains such as the Merchant Special provide a variation in the operating scheme and keep things interesting. I hope that you've enjoyed today's video and as always thank you for visiting the Willow Creek.